Uh oh, that's gone in crooked. I wore this affordable G-Shock clone, the Skme 1988, for one week straight. So what's my verdict? I've got some compelling observations to share. Plus, we're going to take this thing apart and have a look on the inside. And I've even got a little announcement for you. So stick around to the end. <laughs> So let's make a start with what I didn't like about this watch. First of all, I really dislike that the bezel features the word sport. It is such a generic word that really just cheapens the whole feel of the watch and makes it feel like a Chinese copy. Why not proudly display the Skme brand name up there on the bezel? I think that would look much better. And that's actually one of the big reasons why I chose this green and black colorway. The word sport kind of blends in. Whereas some of the other colorways, as you'll see here, have really made it bold. And I just don't think I could deal with that. In our unboxing video for this watch, which you can check out here if you missed it, Fratellini left a comment letting us know that the stopwatch appeared to be showing random digits for the hundredths of a second. So I've came up with an idea to test this. We're going to put it in slow-mo and find out once and for all. Here we go at 240 frames a second. So as you can see in this slow motion footage, the digits do in fact appear to be increasing at the correct rate and aren't just random digits as we suspected. Although to be honest, it wouldn't surprise me if Skme did try to pull that. Oh, and he stopped it on five seconds exactly. Like the video. All right, you're off the hook for that one, Skme. But one other thing that I disliked about this watch was some of the tolerances around it, which allowed for sand to accumulate after I took it to volleyball. See the screw there, how it's got that big gap with the sand? And then also these straps, there's a bit of sand that's kind of accumulated under there. So not a deal breaker, but something to be mindful of. Also, wait a second, check this out. There's actually quite a substantial gap under the bezel here. I've literally just noticed that. See how this half is a little bit shorter than that one, and that's because of the big gap there. I wonder what that's about. This is really loose. Oh my god, you can just... <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> that bezel is just not even held on properly. May as well clean out the sand while it's open. Yeah, I guess that's got rid of the gap there now, but something tells me that would be quite easy to remove again. Yeah, that's not good at all. Come on, Skme, get it together. Now, if you'll remember in the unboxing video, we tested the negative display against two other watches and worked out that it's actually pretty good in terms of viewing angles. But we had a comment from a viewer, Simeon, who noticed that it's actually really only these four big digits which are legible. And as we tilt it, I think he's right. See how we can see the main time, but kind of the date uh, gets a little bit blurry at certain angles. So. Really, the viewing angle is not actually as good as we initially thought. Now, Simeon also brought up that there's this little corrugated pattern here on the side, which I hadn't even noticed. And he said that he didn't like it and it makes it look cheap. But I'm going to disagree with that. I actually quite like this little pattern now that I'm aware of it. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. Do you think that adds to the watch or do you think it's a negative? But anyway, here's some more footage of that negative display while I had it out in the sun. And as you can see, the digits are almost double layered. The white part kind of sits below the black background, so pretty interesting. Another thing I didn't like about the 1988 is this strange double sectioned keeper with this great big gap in the middle. And what I found was that when I went to equip the watch, a lot of the time it would get jammed in this double keeper. Now I'll try and show you as you tuck it in there. So it's gone in smoothly, of course, when I go to show you, but a lot of the time it would actually kind of get stuck at the halfway point and just kind of flex. And sometimes it would even actually poke all the way through and get jammed like that. So I really don't understand why they wouldn't have just made this as one smooth piece. An improvement I'd like to see with the 1988 would be adding an auto repeat function to the timer, which at the moment just simply is not available. And for myself, that would make cooking a hell of a lot easier because I often use the auto repeat when cooking steaks. And speaking of which, we had a comment the other day saying, geez, how many steaks does this guy cook? I know, I know, it's a serious addiction. My final dislike of this watch is how easy it is to scratch this lens. And if I hold it under the right lighting, 
There you go. See all of those scratches surrounding the light source there? Unbelievable. Because I never really even grazed this against anything. I did wear it to volleyball. Maybe some sand touched the lens, but you know, it's just a disproportionate amount of scratches. So I am disappointed. I've looked it up on the SKME website and apparently this is just made of resin. So that explains it. Bubble says ram the like button if you're enjoying the video so far. And now it's time to go through the things that I liked about this watch. First of all, it's the price. This watch comes in at less than 15 Australian dollars and offers incredible value. Despite this incredible price, the watch boasts 50 metres of water resistance and as you can see, had no problems holding up to hot showers every day. Next up, it's the alarm and back by popular demand, it's the Sleepy Goat Alarm Test. Well, I am delighted to report that this watch can wake me up with its alarm tone, despite how sleepy I am, and I have a theory as to why this is the case. I noticed that the alarm tone of the SME is substantially deeper sounding than the standard Casio alarm. Here's an example. By the way, this A700W that you just saw in that alarm test, which is a fantastic video review, if you missed it, I actually broke this one recently by stupidly wearing it to a volleyball game. And as you can see, the clasp now does not close. So stay tuned for a repair video on this one and make sure you're subscribed. I discovered this little oddity as well. Depending on where you start the alarm test, whether it's from the main menu here or the signal setting area here, it actually produces two slightly different tones. Let me know if you can tell the difference and why you think it may be the case. I really like the ability to cycle back to the home time using audio cues so you don't have to look at the watch. I really like these generously sized pushes which are just incredibly easy to press, especially compared to some of the G-Shock pushes which can be a real pain, especially when you're wearing it on the wrist. I really like that Skme came up with so many different colorways, some of which are a little bit bolder than others. America. Funnily enough, this watch ended up saving the day at a board games night I attended because our crappy egg timer was unreliable and kept getting jammed. In fact, it's jammed right now as well. The only thing that I would like to improve about the timer on the SME is adding an audio beep to let us know when it has been started. As with our LF20W, which was another fantastic review if you missed it, you'll hear that when we press start, there's a nice audio signal to let you know the timer has begun. Whereas with the SME, it is silent and can be a little bit inconvenient for those listening out to start. So, what is my final verdict on the SME 1988 having worn it for one week straight? Well, one thing is for sure, this watch offers incredible value and a multitude of features for less than 15 Australian dollars. Now guys, I get it, inflation is high right now, we're definitely feeling it here in Australia, and I can definitely see why people would be wanting to get more bang for their buck and buy a watch like this. So in my opinion, this watch is a good buy. Case closed. Don't go anywhere because we're about to open this watch up for a look inside. And then we've got a quick announcement. And if you'd like to get your hands on this ridiculously affordable watch, I'll leave a link for you in the description below. Smash that like button and let's crack in to the SKME 1988. Look at that. Look at how they've done the negative display. It's almost like it's like it's just a layer, like a background layer. I'm really curious how they've done that. And there is the inside of the actual case, as you can see with the little pushes there. See, so you can see the text on there where it says SKME and all of the various text around the sides. It's very interesting indeed. Uh-oh, that's gone in crooked. 
So a lot of the time with the G-Shocks, they actually make it so that you cannot put it in crooked. But it looks like there's no such uh, exception for the SCME. So we are going to have to try and rotate this. So see that little uh, notch there? That should be aligned with there. But really, it shouldn't have even let me press it down without that being aligned. There we go. Much better. Here is our quick announcement. I'm pleased to report that our next watch of the week, the GBX100, has arrived in Australia thanks to Red Wyvern. So there will not be a watch of the week community poll this week, seeing as you guys already voted on a viewer submitted watch. Make sure you're a subscriber with notifications on so you don't miss it when we unbox the GBX100. Make sure you've liked the video and while you're down there, let me know what did you think about the pros and cons of the SCME 1988. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Here's some more great content for you to watch next and here's a link to our YouTube membership program. Come check it out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next review.